It is hard to believe that the man that created those colorful and vivid images says he made them following pure science. But who is George Seurat, a man that left so much to the art world and yet so little about his inner life? George Pierre Seurat, a French post-impressionist artist, changes the course of modern art back in the 1880s with his large-scale work A Sunday Afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte. Initiating Neo-Impressionism by developing a new painting technique called Divisionism, or more known as Pointillism, he is one of the most iconic late 19th century artists. George Seurat was born on December 2, 1859 in Paris into a very rich family. He studied art with sculptor Justin Lequeen and attended the École des Beaux-Arts in 1878 and 1879. During that period Seurat discovered a book from 1827 that inspired him for the rest of his life, Essay on the Unmistakable Signs of Art by Humbert de Superville, a painter-engraver from Geneva, it dealt with the future course of aesthetics and with the relationship between lines and images. After a year of service at Brest Military Academy, he returned to Paris in 1880. He had a small studio on the left bank. For the next two years, he devoted himself to mastering his Conte crayon drawing techniques. Later, he garnered a great deal of critical appreciation for his studies and sketches. He spent 1883 on his first major painting, a huge canvas titled Bathers at Osnier. His monumental work shows young men relaxing by the Seine in a working-class suburb of Paris. Although influenced in its use of color and light tone by Impressionism, the smooth, simplified textures and carefully outlined objects distinguished his works. After he was rejected by the Paris Salon he found a new fellow circle with the independent artists of Paris. During this period, he had seen and been strongly influenced by the monumental symbolic paintings of Puvis de Chavon. He also met the 100-year-old chemist Michel Eugène Chevreul and experimented with Chevreul's theories of the chromatic circle of light and studied the effects that could be achieved with the three primary colors, yellow, red, and blue, and their complements. In 1884 Seurat and other artists formed the Société des Artistes Independents. Later he met and befriended Paul Signac, who share the same thoughts about the art and follow the color theory used as a base of the pointillism. In the summer of 1884, Seurat began work on his masterpiece, Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte, which took him two years to complete. He reworked the original and completed numerous preliminary drawings and oil sketches. He sat in the park, creating numerous sketches of the various figures in order to perfect their form. He concentrated on issues of color, light and form. Seurat's painting was a mirror impression of his own painting, Bathers at Osnier, completed shortly before, in 1884. Whereas the bathers in that earlier painting are doused in light, almost every figure on La Grande Jatte appears to be cast in shadow, either under trees or an umbrella or from another person. Some critics see in the painting the affectation and the pose of modern society. The figures are mostly still, waiting to be seen. Some of the female figures are recognized as prostitutes with renewed social status, another clue to the hidden criticism in the painting. One of the interesting theories suggests that the painting is made to be seen from an angle, not in front. The position of the viewer is meant to be on its right corner, with a gaze to the water, like the figures on the painting. Seurat's artistic personality combined sensibility and passion for logical abstraction and almost mathematical precision of mind. He was fascinated by a range of scientific ideas about color, form, and expression. He believed that lines tending in certain directions, and colors of a particular warmth or coolness, could have particular expressive effects. He also pursued the discovery that contrasting or complementary colors can optically mix to yield far more vivid tones. He called the technique he developed chromoluminism, though it is better known as divisionism. It is a method of separating local colors into separate dots. His technique was called pointillism after the tiny strokes of paint that were crucial to achieving the flickering effects of his surfaces. He searched for representation not only the color of depicted objects but capturing all the colors that interacted to produce their appearance. He believed that great modern art would show contemporary life in ways similar to classical art, except that it would use technologically advanced techniques.
He was interested in Gothic art, popular posters and those unconventional sources for expression leaves their mark on his art. He wanted to dissociate from Impressionism's preoccupation with the fleeting moment and searched his themes in the unchanging states in life, the scenes of urban leisure and the simple everyday of the bourgeois and the working class, the essence of their life and most distinguishing characteristics. In 1887, while he was temporarily living in a garret studio, Seurat began work on Les Pozuses. This painting was to be the last of his compositions on the grand scale of the Bainade and La Grande Jatte. He thought about adding a place cliché to this number but abandoned the idea. Most of the well-known Seurat paintings do not present pieces from his personal life, but one of them is young woman powdering herself and it is a portrait of Seurat's mistress Madeleine Noblick. The way he portraits her represents his growing interest in popular art and posters. Noblick was a working-class woman with whom Seurat maintained a long-term secret relationship, keeping her separate not only from his bourgeois family but also from his bohemian friends. In Seurat's later work he left behind the calm, stately classicism of early pictures like Bathers at Usnier, and pioneered a more dynamic and stylized approach that was influenced by sources such as caricatures and popular posters. These brought a powerful new expressiveness to his work, and, much later, led him to be acclaimed by the Surrealists as an eccentric and a maverick. His last major works depict scenes from the nightlife and of the circus, parade, Circus Sideshow from 1887 The Can Can from 1889 and The Circus from 1890, which remained unfinished. Parade de Cirque is described as one of Seurat's most important paintings, its formality and symmetry is highly innovative. Circus Sideshow influenced the Fauves, Cubists, Futurists, and Orphists. The work is dominated by a monotony of horizontal and vertical lines, suggesting the rhythms of Egyptian reliefs and frescoes, influence of which can be found in other Sirat's works, too. Seurat establishes the position of his subjects through lighting. Those in the foreground are unlit, painted in dark blue, while those behind the gas jets are brilliantly lit. A 1990 examination of Circus Sideshow at the Metropolitan Museum of Art Laboratory under light similar in color to that given off by gas lamps, revealed an extraordinary transformation, writes art historian Robert Herbert, under the colored light the faces of the figures on the platform no longer appeared unnaturally orange but flesh color, the shadows on the trombonist and on the spectators were no longer bright ultramarine blue but black, and the entire painting glowed as if it were lit from behind, which, of course, is precisely the effect of Contra Lumiere on which Seurat predicated the picture. Circus Sideshow is Seurat's most mysterious painting, not only for its mathematically precise composition but also for its coded social criticism against the vanity of the society. The second piece the Can Can is divided into three principal spaces. Musicians occupy the lower left section, a row of dancers occupies the upper right. They are characterized by curves and rhythmic repetition, creating a synthetic sense of dynamical movement. The background consists of ornate cabaret-style lighting fixtures, and a few members of the audience sitting in the front row. On the lower right, another client is staring with a sidelong glance with desire. The composition focuses on an upward movement of lines throughout the painting, an extremely complicated machinery of lines representing the can-can rhythmic dance and uplifted mood. Although unfinished, Seurat's The Circus captures the emotion and movement of one portion of a circus scene. The painting's composition is divided into two spaces, with the circus artists occupying the lower right, characterized by curves and spirals creating a sense of movement, and the audience occupying the upper left, confined to rows of benches. The audience shows the distinctions between social classes sitting in rows, from the well-dressed higher classes near the front, to the lower classes in the gallery at the back. Sitting in the front row, in a top hat, is Seurat's friend and fellow painter Charles Engrand. A sense of space is created by the white-faced clown in the foreground, facing away from the viewer, and the tears of bleachers. Another pair of clowns are tumbling to the right behind the ringmaster. The work remained unfinished at Seurat's death a few days later, in places, the white ground and a grid of blue lines used by Seurat to create his composition are still visible. 
Early critics complained that the subjects were stiff, like automatons. Others later saw it as a forerunner of Cubism. Success quickly propelled him to the forefront of the Parisian avant-garde. His triumph was short-lived, as after barely a decade of mature work he died at the age of only 31. But his innovations would be highly influential, shaping the work of artists as diverse as Vincent van Gogh and the Italian futurists, while pictures like Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte, 1884, have since become widely popular icons. Seurat died at the age of 31 from a respiratory infection, not long after that his mistress and child followed him. In addition to his seven monumental paintings, he left 40 smaller paintings and sketches, about 500 drawings, and several sketchbooks. Though a modest output in terms of quantity, they show him to have been among the foremost painters of one of the greatest periods in the history of art. If you enjoyed this video, you can like it, subscribe to the channel, or share it. This will be a sign for us that we are doing something valuable.